Okay, so back to looking at that example that we've already covered, where we looked at all the early finishing times. So all the early finishing times are sitting on our graph right now. So now the idea between the later start time is that the ones that are actually going to have wiggle room are going to be the ones that are not on our critical path. But we can work out the later start time for all the tasks in our graph by investigating very, very similar, similarly to how we did you know, the earliest finishing times, except we're going to start at T and then go backwards. So we're going to have T here, and we're going to say the earliest start time, starting time of T, so we have here at T, is going to be T minus the time it takes to actually complete task T. So we have 27 minus 0. Here we have 27 minus 0, and we have 27 minus 0. And then we're going to take the minimum of any of those three. All of them are equal to 27, so we know that the earliest you know, start time for t is 27. Now, bear in mind, you don't actually have to do this one here. I just want to start it from here so you, you get the idea. But you kind of know that your finishing should begin when you ending it because the task has no time to it associated with it. So again, this one is not exactly the most necessary one. You'll usually start at L, F, and G. But I just wanted to show you the process from the very beginning. So next up, we now have the earliest or the latest start time for T. So we take this later start time of the 27. And that's why I wanted to do it so that later on, as we continue on, you understand which values we're utilizing. So we have this later start time, right? Now we're going to take this later start time and we are going to go to your G. So you have your latest start time of the predecessor, the 27, and you're going to minus the 7 that it takes to get to G. So you have the latest start time of the one just before this G vertex, but you want to find the latest start time for, for G, which means you're going to have to subtract the time it takes to actually do G. So you know that it's going to then be your 27 minus your 7. And your 27 minus your 7 is your 20. So the latest start time for G is at time unit 20. Okay, then you're going to, again, look at the rest of them. So you're going to look at F now. And you're going to have 27 minus 3. So 27 minus 3 is going to give you 24. So the latest start time for F is at time unit 24. So again, I'm just going to remove that so it's a little bit clearer for you afterwards. But just so that you see what's going on. And then you're going to do the same for L. So L is going to be 27 minus 4. So 27 minus 4 gives you 23. So the, again, latest start time for L is at unit 23, time unit 23. Okay, and you'll notice again what I've done is I have again used my topological ordering to make sure I'm getting things, you know, in order. So I've done everything on the level down from it. Not necessary, but it makes your life a lot easier. Then we move onwards. So now we're going to move to B and we're going to move to E. So now we have the latest start times of G and of F in this situation. So we're going to actually have to investigate both of them for E, for example. So let's start with E. So we're looking at E. We take the 24 of the F minus the 16. But we also have to look at, so we have to investigate all the arcs radiating out of E. So we also have to look at 20 minus 16. So this is what they mean by they say that you must take your minimum in regards to this is because you're going to be investigating you know whichever one of these is smaller whichever this one results in smaller so when you you can say it just a lot easier by just looking at of all the arcs radiating out of e which one has the smallest latest start time and you take that one and you utilize it for e okay so then you'll have 20 minus 16 is going to give you 4. So 
you're going to have the latest start time of E is going to be 4. Okay, so again, just a reminder, when you're working out these calculations, you look at all the arcs radiating out of that vertex. You look at their latest start times. You take the smallest of that one. And then you subtract the weight of the edge radiating in towards that vertex. Okay, so let's move on and we go to B. So B is 23 minus 12, which gets us 11. So B's latest start time is 11. Okay, so now we've covered, you know, this layer. Next up, we have D and A. So again, D is going to be the one that's slightly more complicated because it has two arcs radiating out from it. So again, we're going to look at the latest start times of, all, of both arcs radiating out of D. So we have 11 and we have 4. We select the smallest, which is 4. And then we subtract the weight of the edge radiating in towards D, which is 4, which gives us 0, which means the latest start time for D is 0. Okay? Then we move on. And... We look at A, and A is going to be your 11 minus your 7, which is going to give you 4. Okay, so again, the entire process, you look at, you have the arc that you investigate in the latest time for. So you have this arc here. You look at all the arcs, latest times where it's radiating out of. And you look at their latest start time. And you select the minimum from this group. So you select the smallest. Okay? So then you'll take the smallest minus the weight of the arc radiating in towards this vertex. And that's going to give you the latest start time of that, this particular vertex. So that's just a reminder of how it works and how, you, how you're going to go approach it. Okay, so now we have our graph that basically has the earliest finishing times and the latest start times. And this can easily show us, you know, which one is our critical path. The first thing that you will be able to notice is obviously where the latest start time is zero, well, that's definitely on our critical path. So D is definitely on our critical path. So we know that, you know, that kind of situation. But one of the things that we can note is, or in particular, is if we look at our earliest finishing time and we subtract our earliest finishing time from the and the weight of all the time it takes to actually perform that task. So say, for example, let's go up to B and we have, we have the 19 is the, earliest finishing time, and we say 19 minus 12. Well, 19 minus 12 is going to give us 7. So that 7 does not correlate with the 11. So the earliest start time of B was 7, but the latest start time is 11. So you can see that B is not that required. It's not that, you know, necessary. So one of the things just to note that if you have to take your earliest finishing time and minus the time it takes to do that task, if it does not match the latest start time, it is not critical. So again, we can go ahead and we can look and we can say, okay, well, in E, it's 20 minus 16. That gives us 4. So E is critical. Okay, and we can again go through the process. We can go look at 23 minus 3. 23 minus 3 is 20. 20 is not equal to 24, so F is not critical. Then we can go to G and we can say 27, you know, minus 7 gives us the 20. So, so 27 minus the 7 gives us the 20. Therefore, G is critical. And, okay, at this point, we're pretty much done. But the whole idea behind it is, again, you can check utilizing your earliest finishing time and your latest start time. 
if your earliest finishing time minus the time it actually takes to complete the task is not equal to your later start time, that task is not critical. There is a slack involved. So one of the other things to note, and I'll leave out the notes now, but I'm going to add it in here just so you can understand and, can, uh, and see that, is let's just go back to B, for example. So we had the earliest time, and the earliest finishing time of B was 19. And then we said, okay, 19 minus 12 gives us 7, and 7 is technically the earliest start time. So we could work out the earliest finishing time from the earliest start time or the earliest start time from the earliest finishing time. So let's just be very, very clear here just to let you notice and see what's going on. So the earliest start time was 7, but we said that the latest start time was 11. So we have what is referred to in project management and stuff as slack. So we have a slack there of four. In other words, we have four units of time in which we can play around on whether to begin task B or not. So that's just something just to note. But again, just to go through the process and determine which one is critical and which one is not, you take your earliest finishing time minus the weight you know, of or the time it takes to complete that task. So let's do it like this. Earliest finishing time of E minus the time it takes to complete E and it's equal to some value. If it is not equal to your late start time, your latest starting time, then it is not critical. If it is equal to your late start time, it is critical. So again, you take your, for example, let's go back to E, you have your 20. 20 minus the 16 is equal to 4. 4 is your late start time. So therefore, it is critical. And again, going back to your B, you would have your 19 minus your 12 which is equal to 7 and 7 is not equal to 11 so it is not critical that's why you'll see it's not on that red path which is the critical path so just some things to note and some things to be aware of i know that if you had worked out based on your early start time and then you you would have to then work out your late start time it's a lot easier to see them all or having all the information all the information is not that fully necessary once you have your late start time and your early finish time you can pretty much work and you have your weights you can pretty much do everything